You are listening to Second Chance Ministry Radio. List of I Am Affirmations Written by Chris Atkins Narrated by Roger Culver Introduction to List of I Am Affirmations The list of I Am Affirmations has been compiled for you to achieve your God-given optimal health and wealth, your passionate and fulfilling love and peace, absolute self-confidence and success. By meditating and reciting these I Am Affirmations, you begin to tap into the unlimited power that lies within your spirit person. The very life of God that animates us is in every single one of the trillions of cells within us. Every second of our lives, this power is available to us. This power, our power, begins to surface and take charge, leading us consciously and subconsciously into our created-in-the-image-of-God identity. Now you will begin to consciously and subconsciously work towards achieving your goals. You will feel the confidence that comes with the new unharnessed power that you are now aware of. Science has proven that our mind and body responds to our own voice over any other person's voice. The power of I Am Affirmations for healing can transform your health and energy. Use these affirmations by personalizing them for your heart, lungs, other internal organs, and body parts. This releases and affirms the inner self-healing that has been gifted to all humankind and resides in our inner spirit person. Consider using these affirmations and personalize them, adding your name, family names, your business names, use your power, use your voice, create your environment. Go to the next level by keeping these affirmations on your mind. This will supercharge your voice and confidence level. Thinking of your I am affirmations instead of worry, anxiety, being afraid, or getting down over the past. As a person thinks in his heart, so he becomes. Out of the abundance of the heart or spirit, a person speaks. If a person is always talking about being afraid, they are very unlikely to step up and take advantage of opportunities as they arise. Write your goals down on paper, and they will come to pass. You will begin again to affirm your unlimited power, consciously and subconsciously, working towards and making decisions to fulfill your heart's desires. Make short, mid, and long-term goals. If they are not written down, what will you have to work towards accomplishing? Adjust your goals as you begin to grow in grace and knowledge. They are your goals. Be proud of who you are. Your life is your gift. Enjoy. Prologue of I Am affirmations. Have you ever asked yourself, who am I? Here's your answer. This is a list which reveals who we really are, and not whom someone else said we are. This list of I am affirmations reveals our identity in Christ. Hear yourself say these out loud, meditate on these, and notice how you begin to feel about yourself. Enjoy. Chapter 1 not just empty words. I love that these affirmations are not just empty words that are blown in the wind with no power to help us or that are empty words on paper with no life in them and full of no hope. Rather, they are real promises that God himself promised us. They are such powerful, meaningful, and life-giving words from God's own lips. He is telling us who we are and where we came from. He is telling us what is rightfully ours, so we can recognize if it has been stolen from us. 
He utters these many promises over and over. He wants us to realize and take ownership of what he sees in us. He saw ahead of time and knows that we would struggle with our identity in some circumstances in our lives. How can we know what he promised unless we know what the Bible says or unless someone tells us and teaches what the Bible says about us? God himself answers all of mankind's questions about who we are and to whom we belong. He shows us we are not separated from him, but we are connected, united, and one with him. It's amazing how he unconditionally loves us. Whether we feel it or not, it is true. How many of us have believed negative things about ourselves out of guilt or what a person has ingrained in us? Will you grasp and breathe in his love for you? Hear what he's saying to you now. Be sure to take it personal, because right here is where it becomes as personal as it gets. I am a believer, and the light of the gospel shines in my mind. I am a branch of the true vine and a channel of Christ's life. I am a candle in a dark place. I am a child of God. I am a chosen person, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am a citizen of heaven. I am a city set on a hill. I am a disciple of Christ. I am a doer of the word and blessed in my actions. I am a faithful minister. I am a fellow heir and fellow member of the body of Christ. I am a fisher of humankind. I am a fountain of life. I am a free son to God. I am a friend of Jesus. I am a gift. I am a giver. I am a growing reflection of the Lord's glory. I am a hearer of God's voice. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am a living stone. I am a member of Christ's body and a partaker of his promise. I am a minister of our God. I am a minister of reconciliation for God. I am a new creature in Christ. Chapter 2 God is thinking about you. We are always on God's mind. Did you hear that? Take your time and sit with this thought for a moment. We are always on God's mind. Wow! God is thinking about you and me. We really must mean a lot to God if he is giving his thoughts and choosing to think about us. Just like God, as humans, we are always thinking about our loved ones. Out of all the things God himself could think about, he is choosing to always think about us, who he loves, in our good times and in the hard times. His love for us is not diminished or vanishes away because we go through hard times. How moving is that? He saw us in these times, and he knew how we would feel. He knew we would feel beaten, broken down, and even left to fend for ourselves. He also knew we would search for answers and ask the question, Why, God? Did you know that he actually tells us to ask him for what we want? He told us to ask him because... He wants to help us, so he has our permission to move mountains on our behalf. Why would God need our permission? The answer is because he made us to have a free will, a will to choose what we learn in our lives, and what we keep in our lives, and what we push away from our lives. In other words, God is a gentleman. He won't force his way in our lives, 
So he simply asks you to choose to let him in so he can have an intimate, loving relationship with you. Did you not know that he says we can do all things through him because he gives us the strength to overcome any obstacle we face? Did you not know that he calls us overcomers because we always overcome things in life? Did you not notice that everything we go through passes and is temporary? Did you not know he says we have the victory, we have the upper hand, that we are above all hardships and that we are not beneath them? He tells us here our rights, our position, and the authority we have in him. He is telling us that we can and have overcome anything we ever face in life. Have you ever noticed? Here are more affirmations that you can believe in and accept. I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am a peaceful warrior. I am a priest of the Lord. I am a promise. I am a recipient of God's abundant provision of grace. I am a rock. I am a saint. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. I am a son, daughter of God. And because I am a son, daughter, I am an heir. I am a sower. I am a spirit being alive to God. I am a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. I am a star. I am a strong tower from the enemy. I am always on God's mind. I am a tree of life. I am a true vine. I am a true witness. I am a victor. I am a victorious athlete in Jesus Christ. I am a victorious warrior. I am a witness. I am able. I am above only and not beneath. I am Abraham's seed and heir. I am accepted in the beloved. I am adopted. I am advocated for. I am alive to God. I am alive with Christ. I am already He. I am always in God's love. I am an ambassador for Christ. I am an apostle. I am an heir according to the promise. I am an heir of eternal life. I am an heir of God and joint heir with Jesus. I am an heir to the blessings of Abraham. I am an imitator of Jesus. I am an inheritance. I am an invincible warrior. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I am anointed with God's Spirit. I am answered by God in prayer. I am appointed a messenger, an apostle, and a teacher. I am approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. I am armed with God's power. I am assured that God works for my good in all circumstances. I am avenged. I am awake. I am baptized into Christ's death. I am beauty, beautiful. I am beloved of God. Chapter 3 The Price for Life in the Bible, God tells us that we are bought with a price. The enormous price was that Jesus died on the cross for each and every person, not leaving one single person behind. He did this of his own free will, not expecting anything in return from anyone. 
He did this to show his love for humankind. His purpose was to come and save us, not to come and condemn us. How about that? Someone came to give us something free, not to take anything from us. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has come to give us life, and life more abundantly. With no strings, he offers us his blessing of salvation. He gives us another choice, a choice to believe and accept what he has done for us. When we accept this Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are accepting him and his grace. This is why the Bible says you are saved by grace. In other words, we can't do anything to earn it. We simply accept it. It is given to us freely. And with this freedom are many benefits. We have blessings now, and we have purpose now, and our eyes are open to what rightfully belongs to us. We recognize we are blessed, that all things have become new, that we have a clean slate, that we have authority, and that we have a new relationship with Almighty God. Here are a few things we have in Him. I am blessed. I am blessed along with Abraham. I am blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. I am bliss. I am born again. I am born of God and nothing evil can touch me. I am bought with the price by the blood of Jesus. I am breath, the breath of God. I am bright and therefore a light to all. I am brought to glory in and by Christ. I am built up to be strong. I am buried with Christ in baptism and raised to a new life in Christ. I am called. I am called into fellowship with Jesus Christ my Lord. I am called of God by His name. I am called of God to be the voice of His praise. I am called out of darkness into Christ's marvelous light. I am calm. I am cared for by God. I am carried on His wings. I am chosen of God. I am chosen, holy, and blameless before God. I am Christ's witness. I am cleansed of all wrong in Christ. I am clothed with His strength. I am comforted by God. Chapter 4 This gift is yours. Not only did Jesus die for us on the cross and give us a clean slate, but he also sent us another gift. He knew we would need help in this life, and he saw every need we had ahead of time. So he sent us his precious Holy Spirit to be with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and our standby. One of my favorite Bible verses and an absolute promise from God, is in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. For he, God, himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you? Assuredly not. Accompanied by this promise in John chapter 10, verse 28 through 29, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. 
My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. What amazing promises God has given us. He won't ever leave us. No one can separate us from God's love, and no one can snatch us away from Him. We can be confident in His love and help for us. In Him, we are safe. Here are even more promises that we can affirm in our lives. I am compassionate. I am competent. I am complete in Christ. I am competent and full of confidence. I am confident that God will complete the good work He started in me. I am consoled by God. I am controlled by the Spirit. I am counseled by God. I am covered by the blood of Jesus and by the Holy Spirit. I am covered in His light. I am created by the very hand of God. I am crucified with Christ and raised with Him. I am dead to all sin. I am defended by God's strength. I am delivered. I am delivered from the power of darkness and translated into God's kingdom. I am delivered from the epic anger to come. I am desired of God. I am endless, eternal, and without end. I am engraved on the palm of God's hands. I am enriched in every way. I am eternally kept in the palm of His hand. I am eternity. I am ever increasing in glory from God. I am faithful. I am far from oppression, and fear does not come near me. I am fathered. I am filled with the fruit of righteousness through Jesus Christ. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am firmly rooted, built up, and established in my faith. I am forgiven of all sins and washed in the blood of Christ. I am formed from the womb and born of the Spirit. I am free forever from sin's power. I am free from all bondages. I am free from condemnation, criticism, and guilt. I am free from oppression and abuse and control. I am free from the law of sin and death. I am from God. Chapter 5 This is not a test. One thing we can be sure of is that God is good and no evil can come from Him. He fills us with so many good things that not only are we full of these good things and are taken care of, but these blessings He has given us overflow out of us to other people who need us. We now have become an instrument spreading the goodness of God. We are so full, we can't help but share something good that has happened to us and that has changed our lives so dramatically. If something is not good, then it didn't come from God. I, I know, I, I know. How can I say this? It is so unpopular to the masses. I'm backing my view with this scripture in James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, tested, I am tempted, tested, by God. For God cannot be tempted, tested, by evil, nor does he himself tempt, test anyone. I bet you can't imagine my shock when I found this Bible verse. I also noticed something interesting about Jesus in the Gospels. Wherever he went, he did good. It says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. This is exactly what Jesus did. I only see him healing people and setting them free wherever he went. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 8, a leper came to Jesus and asked him if he was willing to heal him. His answer was emphatically yes, and healed the man. 
So if you're asking the question, but will God heal me? Guess what? You can be sure of the answer because in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, it is also stated that God is no respecter of persons. I have personally experienced the healing power of God in my life, and it was good. God wants you to turn your mourning and your tears into joy. One of the big hurdles people face in life is that we are taught that we would believe it when we saw it. You are listening to Second Chance Ministry Radio.